What's going on guys? So this is going to be a comprehensive look at the random module. So basically what the random module does is it allows you to generate a random number. So in Python what we need to do is we need to import random. And with that we can access all of the various different random methods. So the first one is random.random which just generates a random float between 0 and 1. Now I'm not quite sure about the distribution of this. Now one thing you can do is run this random.random .random, maybe a hundred thousand times or so and you can plot the outputs on say something like matplotlib and you'll see what kind of distribution it is. So I'm assuming it's some sort of uniform distribution. Basically what it does is it allows you to get a float number between uh, 0 and 1 and 1 is not inclusive. So if I run this, so we get a random float, so here is 0.069. Now if we run this again, uh, we get 0.0468. So you'll see that it's kind of locked in uh, the number of digits. So the number of digits is fixed. Um, this is because when you try to get a, a random float number between uh, 0 and 1 and it's continuous, uh, this will be infinitely continuous. So you have to sort of uh, fix the amount of digits you're going to use because this could, you know, go on forever, 99999 nine, 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 or something like that. Yeah, so just a random number between 0 and 1. Now, if you're not satisfied between 0 and 1 and you want something of a more larger scale or just a, a different range, you can just multiply that number. So if we want a random number between 0 and 100, we do random dot random and multiply it by 100. And now we'll get a number between uh, 0 and 100. So here we get 2.5387, etc. So now we have random dot rand int. So earlier we were getting floating numbers. Now if you want in a random integer, uh, use randint. So randint is going to take two numbers, a and b, and a is the left side and uh, b is the right side. So basically you're going to be extracting a number in between these two endpoints, uh, a and b. And both endpoints are included. So you have random that randint, 10 and 100. So basically what we're saying is we want an integer, not a floating number, between 10 and 100. So I run this. And I get back 78. And if we run it again, we get 25. Next up is rand range. So rand range is similar to rand int, that it randomly selects a, a element from a range with start and stop uh, being equivalent to a and b. But we could also feed in this step parameter. Now, if you're aware of slicing in lists, you'll be aware of the step parameter. So the step parameter basically allows you to jump when slicing from uh, iterable. So in this case, we have random range 2 to 50. Instead of including all the numbers between 2 and 50, it's only going to include every other number. So the 2 is saying, if you start with 2, instead of going to 3, you're going to jump to 4. So it's going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So that's what the uh, step parameter does. It allows you to reduce the original set of numbers depending on what you specify as the step parameter. So here, random range from 2 to 50 is basically saying, I want an even number from 2 and 50. So only the even numbers are part of the set. So if we run this, we get an even number 44, and we'll not get any odd numbers because we're using the step parameter 2 to go from 2 to 4 to 6 to 8, and we're skipping all the odd numbers. So if this was 3, it would do something like 2, 5, 8, 11, etc. And we'll jump uh, every three numbers. All right, so one thing you should be aware of is rand range doesn't work with floating numbers. So you can't use non-integer numbers. Non-integer step for a rand range. All right, now we have a uniform distribution. Returns a random floating number from uni uniform distribution given the range, where the parameter start is the starting point and range stop is the last value of the range. So it's between 10 and 20 and it's non-inclusive. So you're basically going to be getting a number between A and B, where A is 10 and 20 is B. And uniform distribution basically means each element within the set has an equal probability of being chosen. So every single number within 10 and 20 has an equal chance of being extracted. All right, so that's uniform, random that uniform. Next up is random the choice. So some of the earlier ones were more ha math heavy, but these uh, next few methods that are uh, more applicable to your lists or just everyday uh, coding and scripting. All right, so returns a randomly selected element from a sequence. So random.choice allows you to basically uh, select a random element from your sequence. 
So this is very useful for say like games or if you need to pick out a random message as an output to some sort of user input, this could be very useful. So we're going to be applying it to a string, random.choicePython, and we're going to be applying it to a list. So random.choicePython, what it's going to do is pick one of the letters randomly, and random.choiceMyList is going to pick one of the elements from the list randomly. So applying on string, so here we picked P, and for the list, we picked out three. If I run this again, here we picked O and one. So random.choice allows you to select one, a randomly selected item from a sequence. Now we have random.choices. So this K parameter is going to allow you to specify how many items you want to select from your uh, sequence. So you feed in a sequence, you feed in K, and then you also have weights and cumulative weights. So weights basically allow you to give priority to certain items. So if you look at the above list, one, two, three, four, five, if you wanted one to have a higher chance, uh, we could give it a higher weight. So I could give it something like five and give two, three, four, five each a weight of one. So one is going to be five times as much as the other elements within the list. So cumulative weights are basically specifying that the later items within the list have a higher probability than the earlier items because the weights are going to be accumulated. So if you give one a weight of one, a two is going to be the weight of one plus the weight of two, and three is going to be the weight of one and two plus the weight you give three. Now, I haven't actually used cumulative weights, so uh, I don't really think you need to worry too much about it, but basically that's what it does. It's giving priority to the items later in your sequence. All right, so once again, let's break down the parameters. Sequence is a sequence you feed. Weights are going to be the weights you give each of the elements. And then K is specifying the amount of uh, elements that you want to extract. Now, one thing you want to be aware of is that this is with replacement. So uh, one can be chosen more than one time, two can be chosen more than two times, two can be chosen more than one time, and so on and so for each element within your list. All right, so let's just run this. We have random that choices, my list k equals three. All right, so you get back three, four, two. Let's just run this again. Two, two, one. So you'll see that despite two being only available in our list once, random that choices uh, is able to extract it twice. All right, so now another example. My list is apple, banana, cherry. A random that choice is my list, and the weights are 1, 1, 10. So we're giving weights to each element within our list. So cherry has a 10 times more probability or weight to be chosen in comparison to apple or banana. So we'll see a lot more cherries within our random that choices. And K is 14, so we're going to pick out elements 14 times. So as you can see, cherry, 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 apple, apple, cherry, cherry. So cherry's picked out uh, multiple times, or a lot more times. Next up is random that shuffle. All right, so this basically allows you to shuffle your list. So if you go back up, you remember my list is apple, banana, cherry. And we're going to print before shuffling and after shuffling. So one thing you have to be careful of random that shuffle is it is an in-place operation. So meaning that I don't have to save the results to my list to actually save the changes. Just by running random that shuffle on my list, the changes are automatically saved back to my list. So you'll see that here, I'm not assigning the changes to my list. I'm just running this method. And this automatically makes the changes to my list. So it's called an in-place operation. So before shuffling my list, random that shuffle my list, and then we're going to print after shuffling my list, and you'll see the changes. So before shuffling, we had apple, banana, cherry, and then we had banana, cherry, apple. Now if I run this again, you'll see that before shuffling should be banana, cherry, apple. Okay, so before shuffling was banana, cherry, apple, and then after shuffling is banana, apple, cherry. All right, so now we have random that sample. So random sample is very similar to random that choices, except that there is no replacement here. So pop is representing any sequence, and k is representing the length or the amount of items you want to choose from the sequence. So it's very similar to choices, except that here there's no replacement. So each item you're going to get is going to be a unique item. So k is the number of unique items you want to select and return. 
Right, so let's just look at an example. We have my list, which is a range from 1 to 7, basically numbers going from 1 to 7. And you have a random that sample my list, and we're going to choose three numbers. So all three numbers are going to be unique. Now if we do something like 6, all numbers are going to be unique. Now I'm not sure what happens if you try to choose a number greater than the length of your list. All right, so yeah, you get an error sample larger than the population or is negative so you can't have a sample that's larger than the population All right so this works on dictionaries as well random that sample my dick that items and you're going to choose three items all right so random that seed now i've actually gone over random that seed briefly within one of my python exercises but basically sometimes you want your random numbers to output the same number uh, each time so you want it to be more deterministic. And this is because, uh, especially in something like machine learning or deep learning, where you need to reproduce the results uh, using random not seed and specifying a random seed helps you to uh, reproduce those results. So any tweaks that you make, you'll know that it's not due to some randomization because you're using the same data. And this will allow you to understand your experiments a little bit more. So. So if I read out the description, it initializes the random number generator. Sometimes it is useful to be able to reproduce the sequences given by a pseudo random generator. By reusing a seed value, the same sequence should be reproducible from run to run as long as multiple threads are not running. So using multiple threads can actually cause distortions within your random nut seed. All right, so the function accepts uh, two arguments. And both are optional. A is the seed value. If A is none, then the default current system uh, time is used. So we never use the default value. We specify the seed because by specifying a seed, we're able to reproduce the results. So this version 1 and version 2 is to reproduce the results for the different Python versions. So if you need to reproduce results with, say, Python 2.7 and using Python 3, I do turn this to version 1. But I've never had to use this version 1 or version 2. So the main parameter you should be focusing is on the A, which actually takes in a seed. All right, so let's just look at an example. All right, so if we set the seed to 20 and we pick a random number from 1 to 100, and then when we set the seed to 20 again and we pick a random number from 1 to 100, you'll see that we get the same number. Now, if I change this to... Now, let me run that again, actually and you'll see we get the same number. So that's what I mean by reproducibility. It allows you to get a random number, but you can actually reproduce that same random number or that same instance as you run more and more experiments. So if we change it to 25, you'll see that we get back 49, 49. And you don't have to use numbers, you can use uh, characters as well, but most code that I've seen all use numbers here. So here we get 35, if I run this again, we'll get back 35. All right, so you can actually save the states of random. So we have random get state and set state. So say you ran, run a random number generator, you can actually get the state of that random number generator and then load that state to get the same number again. So let me just show you an example. That'll be easier to understand. Okay, so we have a number list and we're going to sample five elements from this number list. And then we're going to get the state of the random number generator. So random that get state is going to be saved to the state variable. And now we're going to set the state back to that same state. So random that set state state. Now if we run random that sample again, we'll be able to get the same elements as we did in the uh, first sample. So let me just run this. So you'll see what I mean. Oops, I mean the second sample. Sorry, the second sample. So let me just show you what I mean, and then I'll explain that again. All right, so the first sample is 27, 6, 9, 15, 3. So we print out the first sample, and then we get the random state. And then we save that random state, and we print out the second sample, which is 27, 21, 3, 9, 30. Now, before running the third sample, what we do is we load the state from the second sample, or before we print out the second sample. So if you go back up to this code, you see state equals random that gets state. And then we printed out the sample. And now we set the state back to this state. And we print out the sample. And the third sample is the same as the second sample. So that's what random that state allows you to do. It allows you to reproduce it without using seeds. All right, so that's basically uh, random dot get state and set state.
All right, so next up is random that triangular. Now this is actually not widely used. Um, it's more widely used probably in the NumPy random module, but basically it's following a triangular distribution. And I just put it in here because it's something I didn't know much about, but it's actually not widely used. So you have a low, high, and mode. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to return a random floating number n that's going to be between low and high. Now the mode can be thought of something like a weight. If you want chosen numbers to be closer to low as opposed to high, your mode will be closer towards low. If you want your chosen numbers to have a higher probability closer to high, your mode is going to be closer to high. So basically, uh, the default value of mode is going to be the middle number between low and high. And the mode is a number which is used to weigh the result in any direction. So the mode argument defaults to the midpoint between the two bounds which are low and high. So giving a symmetric distribution. So let me give an example. So random that triangular here are 20 and 60. So your low end point is 20 and your high end point is 60. So you're going to be picking a number between 20 and 60. Now I'll be picking the mode 30. 30 is closer to 20. What you're basically saying is I want the numbers to be uh, closer towards 20. So what you're basically saying is I want the numbers closer to the uh, left hand side. So something like 20 to 40. Uh, with 40 being the midpoint, you want numbers weighed more heavily between 20 and 40 as opposed to 40 to 60. So this 30 is giving more weight to the left hand side. Now there's actually a formula because this is a triangle distribution that gives you the specifics of how uh, the weighing occurs depending on the mode. Now here, uh, if you just specify the low point and the high point, so between 5 and 200, and you don't give it the mode, the default mode is going to be the midpoint between the two numbers, as that will give equal distribution to the left side and right side. So once again, uh, if this was complicated, don't worry too much about it. Uh, this is just some exotic uh, method that's not widely used with the vanilla Python random. All right, so this is the vanilla Python random module. Now I'll also make a video on the NumPy version as well, and I might combine them together as well. All right, so that's it for this video. If there are any questions, I just write them in the comment section, or if there's anything you guys want to see, let me know. Always uh, comment, and you can also follow me on Facebook, where I try to keep you updated as to what I'm working on. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys next time.